Hi, it's Trisha from East Marsh Acres. We are in Cauda today. This is going to be our get to know Cauda today. Um, it's Tuesday. Um, you can hear in the background this church here. It's uh, it's called St. Jan's and it has a Caroleon in it. And uh, so we're going to go inside and we're going to see more about this church. Apparently it's got um, special glass that's made here in Cauda as well. So uh, join us on our on our little uh, tour. You can see what a beautiful little <coughs> street here that it's on. In, in a previous uh, visit, I've, I've got still shots of this street with the very uh, narrow back side, wells, whereas the uh, the front sides are much uh, wider because they open up in a pan shape. But very interesting, quite old. These are 16th century stained glass windows. So they're historical and biblical stories. Some of them are, were original, but others were added. So originally, this was a Roman Catholic uh, church, but it was taken over during the Reformation by uh, Protestants. And uh, the centrality of the pulpit was established at that point in time. The uh, <coughs> pews that we're uh, resting on and that are around the pulpit are still being used uh, for services on a weekly basis and for weddings and for funerals. We were in here for the Christmas. Domed. Here's a visual of the organ consoles which I guess are probably <coughs> up top and in, in behind uh, some of those uh, pipe organs, or the, uh, the, the, the pipes, the organ pipes themselves. So I wonder if this is for baptisms. Maybe not. Oh, yes it is. Oh, it's just a bunk. A bench, sorry. Yeah. There's an interesting juxtaposition. All the remote controls. 
for what, don't know. I don't know if I'm going to put the screen over there, but... Oh, modern day uh, grand piano. A camera. Trained on the pulpit. created for Dutch people. So I would assume that they're relatively large. Uh, quite the assumption, but no. They're relatively small. So this is the choir screen, which designates the Roman Catholic portion of the church. And here's the Protestant pews focused on the uh, pulpit. And here we have the largest windows in the entire church. This is the king's window because it was uh, presented by the king of Spain. So this is the queen's, uh, queen, the king's sister, King of Spain's sister, and she's the one who's kneeling in front. So this window was donated by the town of Harlem. So this window was added after the Second World War by the mayor of Gare, Brechemeister. During the Second World War, the, uh, <coughs> all of the stained glass windows from the, the church were dismantled and placed in chests like you've seen down below this, uh, this window that, that we were just looking at. The window itself, uh, or all of the windows, were then uh, stored safely and reinstalled after the World War. Uh, this is a very new window it was installed in 2015, apparently, um, and it's it's made by a modern modern day uh, uh, artist. So it was here, Trish. Look.
Walker. Oh, well, maybe not. Yeah, so Trisha, the cafe is is in there, and we were here before. Oh. I think I'm going to walk around. But so is this the museum gallery, or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. With the cut on the... The entrance. <coughs> I, I'm sure that we can get through there by the other entrance as well. Yeah. But this is exactly where we have been with, mm -hmm. with MK case. Yep. Yeah. It was all at that Christmas. This is the entrance to the museum of Crowder. The tower that's taken from, I don't know, some grounds that are associated with the church or something along those lines. And there's a moat and some additional buildings. We've been here before, we've figured out. Um, apparently, is it the summer at 12. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that it is. Uh, Twelve museums will be showing a masterpiece from the Rijks Museum side by side with a masterpiece from their own collection. Every province perfect match, an intimate meeting, two masterpieces. Um, so this one is a uh, portrait of a girl. No, it's not. Johannes Cornelis. Yeah, first bronc. <coughs> so this is a portrait of a girl in blue. And then I guess this is the other masterpiece, uh, much newer. It's Xenius Sisters in 1895. William Bastian Tolan. I don't know that name at all. So this is further around the back side of the church. You can see some of the ornamentation. <coughs> Definitely pre Gothic. Uh, you don't see any of those features on this particular church. And the buttresses that are coming out keep the walls up because they had no way of maintaining their structure other than building these big side walls out. It's uh, quite convenient that 500 years ago they were building spaces for the bicycles and motorcycles. <laughs> and then you see the section for the choir we were in previously. <coughs> and the spaces outside have been filled in with cafes heading out onto the so this is inside the Stathouse. The uh, it's just a cloakroom. Yeah. So 
Um, the building was built in, uh, started in 1448 and finished in, in 1452. And it's still used by municipal government mayors here every day, we're told. And uh, uh, all of the history, so down in the basement, we'll get there in a minute. Um, apparently they slaughtered uh, cattle, etc., for the market that is held around um, the stud has uh, every weekend. And we were there last week uh, for the market. You saw it, at least in a previous video. Fairly sparse, but uh, again, uh, nice stained glass windows that are very expensive. Uh, this is the mayor's room. So I guess this is his desk, his, hers, old Dutch, decent decken, aus der Wehr, Hoft, 17 Jahrhunderts. <coughs> I can't read the rest of it. I'm sure my dad will be able to. And a clock. You can see into the interior of the clock. The clock face. A big box. Looks oriental in nature. Particularly if you look at the, some of the paintings. The interesting thing, so um, ceramics came to the Netherlands via the from the Orient. And so a lot of the paintings that you actually see on Dutch ceramics have uh, an oriental kind of orientation to the actual paintings themselves. This looks like a piece of wood that's been preserved. Nineteen forty seven. Anybody can read that. Den Haag. <coughs> this must be a council room. Big fireplace. Previous times. Leather chairs. Where the mayor presides. And again, another fireplace in behind. Look how oh, uh, deep the uh, the window sills are, because uh, of how um, how wide the, the walls themselves are. That this is tapestry. Oh no, I didn't. This is just all tapestry, all the on way the around walls. On the walls. Interesting. So this complete wall here including the door set in it, <coughs> is all tapestry rather than so wall hangings or a previous version of, of what you would think of wallpaper. Notice also another anachronism, so we've got some JBL speakers in the corner. This is the door Big door the balcony. This is where they had Ah, okay. Remember yeah. where they read the story from? Yep. Yeah. So there are doors to the balcony itself. And it's facing the cheese hall that we hope to get to on Thursday morning. City of Gouda. There's no date on this one. So I don't know when Gouda has extended well beyond this now. Notice the uh, <coughs> the fortified canal with the city wall on the inside of it. 
most of the city wall cannot be seen anymore. And the ice on the outside the river. The staircase going upstairs, as opposed to. I don't know what's going to be up there. And then four more. No one. The cabinets are just exquisite. The marquetry that's in here. The amount of time and energy that would have gone into carving those pieces and then doing the inlays as well. So this is the top floor. And it looks like it's set up as a reception room or something along those lines. The previous room with the tapestry was the wedding hall, but it looks like this could be used as a wedding hall as well. Hmm? It's called what? The council meeting hall. Uh, <coughs> you sure that's not the one down? Just well, the other one was too small. Oh. So now this is created. Heads of queens. Interesting. <laughs> Through the windows to the front of the market square. St. John's Church, and the spire there. Okay, let's see if we can find the basement. So this is the uh, stairs to the basement of the stud house. So apparently this is where they would do slaughtering of animals, etc. for the... <coughs> Obviously it's not used for that now anymore. No. It's like a reception room? Or yeah, something along those lines. Yeah. place for people to sit and relax and talk. And the main door is outside. Notice all of the stained glass. This is fairly rudimentary though compared to what we've seen in the church. In fact, this might actually be quite a bit younger. Maybe, I don't know. So one of the things that we we're noticing is that uh, the stairway as we we're going upstairs was uh, so well used over the hundreds of years that uh, it was no longer smooth. Or it was smooth, but it was uh, indented uh, from the number of feet that were going over it. It uh, gives you a sense of the history when you <coughs> see those kinds of things. Anyways, I think that's all that we've seen. Oh, I guess the other piece to, sit, to take a look at are the arches here. So these are original to the uh, building as well. I love this kind of architecture. The kind of work that they had to do to get it to stand up. Yeah. And the pillars themselves as well. It actually looks smaller than what it does on the outside. Yeah. Wow, the walls are so thick, Trish. For those who haven't been to Europe. <coughs> so over there in the corner, of the uh, is a public washroom, but uh, you need to pay for it. So it's uh, it's got a vending machine on the inside, so you can use card or you can use cash, uh, but you need to pay for an entrance to the toilet, which is fairly common. 
So what we tend to do if we're in a town where we don't know where we're going, etc., we'll actually usually find the McDonald's. And uh, use the washroom in the McDonald's even if we aren't buying anything from the McDonald's. Um, but even in McDonald's, you actually may pay, may have to pay as well. But it depends on which one and where they're situated, etc. Well, they have an attendant as well. Yeah, they may have an attendant as well, so mm -hmm. you may or may not get through. Uh, for instance, in in um, uh, where we were seeing all of the the. Uh, windmills, uh, kinder bag. Um, there was no attendant, uh, but there were turnstiles, but somebody had opened one of the turnstiles, so nobody was paying. I was wondering about that when you went in there.